The Marshall Islands are located in the central North Pacific, about 2300 miles southwest of Hawaii. A low-lying country comprised entirely of atoll islands, the Marshalls are probably most widely known for being the site of the infamous Bikini Atoll nuclear test. Today, they are gaining increasing notoriety as a potential casualty of sea level rise. So please join me while we have a look around Madro and some of the impacts from the recent spring tides, which are known locally as King Tides. The main island of Madro is a thin strip of land, typically no wider than 300 metres, and is home to both the capital and at last count over 25,000 people. Luckily for most residents, wave conditions during the February King Tide were unusually calm. Typically strong trade winds drive waves across the reef flat and to the island shore where they break on the beach. Despite the relatively calm conditions, the unusually high water levels allowed waves to overwash parts of Madro, causing local flooding. In places, waves overwashed the island ridge and flooded the low-lying land behind it, potentially causing damage to local vegetation as well as infrastructure and housing. Lagoon-facing properties bore the brunt of tidal inundation, with a lot of the area built on reclaimed land, typically lower in elevation than on the ocean side. This time-lapse footage, taken in Uluga, shows clearly the inundation of a property in a low-lying area along the lagoon coast. Along with flooding, one of the impacts of the King Tides is an increase in litter and debris washed into the Madro Lagoon. Already polluted by illegal dumping of waste from both land and sea, the lagoon was littered with a range of organic and inorganic debris after the high tides. In places, flooding was caused by the high water gently lapping over seawalls and other coastal protections. In other areas, the high tide caused salt water to flow through the storm drains and eventually flood land, often some distance from the sea. Around the airport, coastal protections were exposed as inadequate for keeping water and debris off the road. Once a seawall failed, the road was often flooded and littered with sand and gravel. Recently constructed revetment around the new airport fire station was shown to be highly porous, allowing water to flow through the rock wall and reach the road. The King Tide event itself was not particularly damaging in Madro, but was a sobering reminder of the potential impacts of continued sea level rise on the islands. It also exposed many inadequacies in the planning, design and construction of local coastal infrastructure. The lessons learned from periods of elevated sea level occurring now can greatly assist hazard mitigation and adaptation activities in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this short trip around Madro. Stay tuned for future videos from the University of Hawaii Sea Grant Program.